Okay, so today we're going to talk about AWS S3, what it is and how you can mount it to your computer to get virtually infinite storage. So let's get started. Okay, so AWS S3 is Amazon's cloud offering, if you're not familiar with it, and it's one of their oldest offerings that they have, uh, but they're always improving on it. It's very, very popular, and they're releasing features even just as recently as a few months ago. Uh, so today we're going to talk about how you can actually mount it to your physical computer, whether Mac or PC, and get access to that cloud storage locally. I did this to a Windows network uh, not that long ago, and I was able to get eight uh, exabytes of data, which is eight million terabytes. Uh, which is just phenomenal. And one of the best things about AWS S3 is you just pay for what you use, it's relatively cheap, uh, and you can just get as much as you need. So you can just store all your files up there, um, you can archive data, you can use your, your live data, whatever you want, and it's just constantly available, but you have full control over it. So today we're gonna talk about how you can actually create an account, how you can create a bucket, and how you can actually mount it to your either Mac or PC. So with that, let's get started. Okay, so let's uh, actually get the infinite drive mounted onto the computer. So I've got a Windows 10 computer here. If you take a look uh, at the PC, I've just got a C drive and I have another network drive because I'm running on a VM. So uh, let's go ahead and actually mount a, an S3 bucket to this. So to do this, you'll need an Amazon account. Um, so you just go to aws.amazon.com and you can log into your account here. If you don't have one, it's really easy to create. It takes a minute or two and uh, you have to just put in a credit card number and off you go. So um, so here we go, you log in and you want to click on the S3 service. If it's not here, um, you just type S3 and this will let us actually go ahead and create those buckets. Um, so the first thing, if you've never done this before, one of the things I'd recommend is make sure that you block public access. So public access is uh, truly the public. So it's not just internet access, but it's anybody on the internet that would be able to access your bucket. Uh, so if you have no interest in actually sharing files publicly, just go ahead and hit public access on the account settings and block all public access. That way it'll help ensure that um, your, your buckets don't actually get public access. Okay, so now that we've blocked uh, public access, let's go ahead and create our bucket. So we're going to go to buckets, let's create our first bucket. You have to create a unique name here, so you can't just call it test, for example. Um, if, you, if you do that and hit next, it'll probably say this bucket name already exists. So it has to be, like nobody else in the world has had to come up with this bucket name. So for this, I'm going to call it demo um, windows drive account. Uh, so that that's the bucket name, and the region is where you actually want your data stored. So by default, typically it's in North Virginia, so depending on where you are in the world, you might want your data to be closer. Obviously, the further away it is, then uh, the slower it will be to access your data. You may want to consider rules and regulations about what kind of data you're putting in there and where you might want it to, to live if you want it on US soil or in Europe or Canada or, or wherever it is. So, um, so I'm going to use North Virginia. Do know that your pricing changes based off region. Some regions are cheaper than another. So if you're not sure about that, go ahead to the S3 calculator. I'll put that in the description below and you'll be able to see uh, how those prices change per region. One of the cheapest regions to put things in is in the states, including North Virginia and Ohio and a few of the others. So for this, I'm just gonna do North Virginia and hit next. So here's where we can talk about the versioning, and I talked about this earlier. So versioning is a really great feature where it'll keep uh, a copy of every single version of that file. So every single time you save, it keeps a copy of that history. So we want to turn that on, and I'm going to demo that for you in a second. Uh, we want to go ahead and actually um, encrypt all objects that are stored in S3, and we're going to use the AES-256, the Amazon managed version of that. So all that does is it ensures that when the files are actually saved in Amazon's S3, when it's actually written to their hard drives, that it's encrypted. So if there are hard drives ever removed from the data center um, or whatever, then, then the data that's actually on those hard drives are, is encrypted so they can't see your data. Um, okay, perfect. So let's go ahead and hit next. We've already confirmed we're going to block all access. This is inheriting, inheriting those account privileges. We don't want the public to have access to these. And go ahead and create that bucket. There it is. So if we click into that bucket, we'll see there's nothing in here. Um, and you can see here, here's the versioning that we talked about earlier. So let's um, let's just go ahead and mount this bucket to Windows, and then I'll, I'll show you some of the additional settings we want to change later. So to mount this into Windows, 
uh, we're going to download Cloudberry's uh, drive tool. So I'm not sponsored by Cloudberry, it's just a tool that I've used before. Uh, and this is this there's a few of them that are out there, but this is one that I've used recently. And it's a really great tool for just mounting cloud drives, specifically Amazon S3, to your desktop. Uh, so we'll go ahead and download the free trial and get this going. Okay, so now that we have Cloudberry installed, uh, we'll go ahead and mount the drive. So we're gonna go to options. The first thing we have to do is we have to add the Amazon account to here. So if you log into your Amazon, you're going to go to IAM. This is where you manage your usernames and passwords. And we're going to go ahead and create a user that can access the, uh, the bucket. So I'm just going to call this Cloudberry Drive. We're going to create programmatic access because that's all we need. Uh, I'm going to attach an existing policy here called S3 Full access. This policy will let this user access all S3 buckets and do whatever they want with them. So upload files, create um, create buckets, delete buckets, uh, delete all your data. It can do everything. If you want to see a video about how to lock this down more, I'll put that in the description below. How I cover you can actually uh, lock down and restrict this access a little bit more. But for this demo, I'm just going to do the S3 full access. I would recommend at least doing this one. Because if you don't put any policy on, then that username and password that we're going to create uh, can access your whole Amazon account. And if they ever get compromised, they can uh, spin up compute on, on your credit card. Um, they can obviously delete your data and all those other things, but they can, they can really do anything they want. And so at a minimum, I'd recommend at least doing this S3 full access and going a little bit further. So watch the other video and, and lock it down just to this bucket. So go ahead, we're just gonna create this policy and create the username and password, and it's gonna spit out our access key and our secret key. You're not gonna be able to see these again, so you just save them in a notepad. You don't have to save them forever because you can just regenerate them later. I don't recommend saving them um, in a you know a secure place or anything like that. Just just save them just for the purposes of getting this going. And then later, if you you know need to get a new computer or whatever it is, you can just refresh these keys and install it on the new computer then. So let's go to Cloudberry. We're going to add the account. We're going to create a new account. And here it's going to ask for the access key and the secret key. Perfect. So we're going to head and test the connection and hit OK. Boom. So now we have the S3 account. So we're going to do uh, the T drive, just mount it to there. We're going to call it the AWS S3. And then now we're going to link it to the bucket. So you just hit this dot dot dot. And then you can see the bucket that we created earlier, the demo Windows drive account and hit OK. And now we're going to hit OK and we'll actually mount the drive to T locally on the Windows. So if we go ahead and hit OK, we can close this and go to S3. So now if I take a look at my machine, I'll have a T drive here. It says it's 128 terabytes, but you can really grow this to whatever size you want. And if I look inside of here, there's no files. Same thing here, if I look inside of uh, the S3 on the, on the Amazon side, there's no files. So let's go ahead and create a file here. Um, let's just create a new text document, test, and open it up. So now that we have it open up, we'll just save our first line. So this is a test. Go ahead and save that. And if we refresh the bucket, we'll see the text file is in here. And it's also here on my Windows machine. So I don't have to worry about S3 at this point. I can just keep using this as a, as a local drive. I can share all my files in here. I can dump my documents, my photos, whatever it is. And I know that it's safe in the cloud. Um, but if I want to look at versioning, because we did turn that on, let's go ahead and change this test file. So it has one line in it. Let's go ahead and say this is a second line. And I'll hit Control S, and that's the second time that I've saved this file. Um, so if we take a look at Amazon, and we take a refresh here, we'll see that we have a 40-bit file, test.txt. That's the file I saved earlier. But if I want to see the versions, I hit the Show button, 
and you'll see here that that's the latest version, but I have a couple earlier. So one was zero when I created the file originally. This is the one I did the first line at 14 bits, and this is the next one that I did at 40. So I can actually restore this one I want if I wanted. I can either download it or restore it back to that place. So that's really nice as you are changing files. Um, it's also really, really great protections against, say, a cryptoware. So if, if you get a ransomware or cryptovirus, then uh, if it goes and encrypts all your files, it will just save that as the latest version in the cloud. But if you look at your versions, you'd be able to then go back and actually get your files back unencrypted without having to pay anything. So that's great. Um, the only problem about doing this is, is that now it's gonna keep these versions forever, which means your bucket's gonna keep growing and growing and growing in size. And you might not wanna do that. I don't need versions from say a year ago. So that's where a tool called lifecycle management comes in. So let's do that to this bucket. We go management, we go add lifecycle rule. We're gonna call it the default rule and we're gonna apply it to the whole bucket. You can be very specific, so you can create a folder um, in your system that's like, you know, only keep this for 30 days and it'll automatically delete. Uh, but for this, we're just going to do it to the whole bucket. So specifically what I'm curious about is previous versions. What I'd like to do, uh, sorry, current versions, what I can do here is either I can add, I can add a transition. So I can say, okay, I want to keep it in um, intelligent tiering or glacier, whatever it is, whatever your purpose is of doing this. And there's another video that I have that will cover these tiers and why you may or may not want to use them for your files. Um, but I'm not going to cover that right now. We're not going to transition the existing files. What we do want to do is under expirations, we want to delete previous versions. So any previous files that are say more than 30 days old, um, I want to delete them. That's not going to delete the current version. It's only going to delete the versions, the versioning of that. So that text file that I had where there's three of them, there's the one I first created, that's zero. There's one where I did the second line, uh, sorry, the first line to it. And then there's a third one that I did the second line to it. Um, I don't need those other two files to be readily available after 30 days. I can just delete them. So, um, but that's where you would do that here. Or you can say 365 days if you want to keep all versions for a year. But then after a year, delete all the versions and only keep the current version. Uh, if you check off current version, then that will actually delete your, your actual current data. So that's kind of effective if you have uh, a folder where you're like, just keep this for 30 days, dump a file in there, and then after 30 days, it automatically deletes it from your system. Um, th that's a very specific use case. We're not going to touch more on that today. We want to clean up expired markers and incomplete uploads and hit next. Hit save and you're done. So that will keep your bucket a little bit cleaner. We'll see that rule here now. And it applies to the whole bucket. and It'll permanently delete all previous versions that are older than 365 days. Okay, so that's basically how to create an Amazon account, create an S3 bucket, and mount it to your computer. In the demo, I did it to a Windows 10 computer, but that uh, Cloudberry has an app for both Mac and PC. The Mac instructions are relatively the same. Uh, you just go ahead and download it, install it on your Mac, and enter in those keys, and then mount the bucket. Um, so that's a really great way to get that cloud access onto your local machine. Uh, if you looked when we created the IAM uh, user, the access keys, we use the policy S3 full access. I'm gonna put a link in the description below to another video of how to actually lock down that uh, IAM user even further. So if those keys get compromised, they would only have access to specific buckets. But you should definitely keep those keys safe. You don't want them to get compromised. Um, the other thing is you don't want to trust an obscure bucket name uh, to protect you. So when you go ahead and create that bucket, it has to be a unique name globally. But if you go create a funny name in there and you think that's what's going to uh, protect you because nobody will ever guess it, they have bots scanning all the time. It takes roughly about 10 minutes, regardless of the name, to be found. So you really, really, really want to make sure you block public access. Uh, you really want to make sure you secure your, uh, your, your, your secret key and your access key. And you're going to want to make sure that you uh, check out the video in the description below on how to create an even more refined policy. So if those keys get compromised, uh, your 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 data is the only thing that they can uh, do anything with, uh, but they can't like spin up EC2 or access other buckets or whatever it might be. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to put them in the comments below. Uh, we're going to be talking a lot about different AWS S3 options and AWS uh, uh, features. So feel free to hit that subscribe button and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Have a good day.